Hi, I'm Lee Dahlhauser from 360 Yield Center. I introduce you to Barry Moldenhauer. Uh, today we're going to be installing a, the 360 tanks onto this uh, 2012 John Deere rigid axle power shift uh, tractor. First step in installing the, the 360 tanks is to put together the front weight bracket mount kit. Uh, so it's, it consists of the, the middle section and two outriggers that bolt together with two and three quarter inch five eighths bolts. So we take six of these two and three quarter inch bolts, put them through the outrigger. Put another washer on the other side and fasten it together with the uh, nylock nuts, stainless. So we'll leave these loose for now once we get them together. And uh, once all the bolts are in, we'll tighten them down and we'll throw the, the bar up on the, the weight bracket. Now that we have all the bolts and nuts uh, loosely fastened together, we'll take a 15, 16 inch wrench and impact and tighten them all down. Now that we have the front weight bar all tightened down, we'll, we'll take the three quarter inch, 13 inch bolts and associated hardware and fasten it to the, the front weight bracket uh, on the track. Now that we have the front weight bar uh, loosely assembled to the front weight bracket with the three quarter inch bolts, we're going to take an inch and eighth socket and wrench and tighten them down. All right, the next step is to come around to the right side, install the mount plate on the, the tractor here. One thing to note here is that the pin mount hole always goes to the top. So that shows that the, the, the four close slots here line up with the four bolts on the, on the back of the tractor casting. And these two split holes on this side line up with those two sets of holes there. So as long as you make sure that the, the pin hole is always at the top, uh, you shouldn't, you should be just fine. The hardware we're using to mount this, these plates is the M20 bolt, flat washer, and a split washer stacked just like that. In this case, it's a power shift transmission, so it's a little bit different configuration. They're all flat coplanar. Uh, if you had the IVT transmission, it'd be out of plane, so there'd be a, a spacer that goes behind the left side of these bolts. Today, it's a power shift transmission, so they're all coplanar. We're just going to use these these M20 bolts that we have here. Run them down, not fully tightened, but tight enough that it's not gonna move on us. All right, the next step is to simply install the rear support onto the mount bracket that we just installed. We'll use the inch and a quarter pin uh, it's probably a good idea to check that the pin goes through both holes on the mount plate as well as the hole through the support uh, before you install this. Uh, just from experience, uh, sometimes it gets caught up a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and install the pin here. 
Now that the pin is through both pieces, we'll stick the cotter pin to the end here. We'll take the forklift and we'll drop the fork slowly and it'll rest on the, the tractor casting here. Next step will be to <clears throat> install the right rear support. The next step is to um, install the, the under tractor support. What it does is it ties the rear supports together side to side. So the first step we'll do is we'll take one side, we'll have Barry hold up the rear support here while I bolt it to the flange down there on the bottom. Then he'll go around to the other side, lift up the other side and I'll bolt it onto that side. What you do is you use the 5 8 inch hardware supplied, um, two inches long with the flat washer on each side of the joint and uh, a stainless lock nut goes with it. While you're down there, you can go ahead and tighten up the under tractor support using a 15 16 wrench and uh, socket. We're leaving the mount plate bolts loose just in, and the, the front weight brackets loose just in case there's a little bit of stack up tolerance. It'll allow you to be able to drop the tank support in place and move around a little bit and negotiate the, the tolerancing just a, a little bit better. Once that's on, then we'll go back and tighten everything down. Before we put the tank assembly onto the tractor, we're going to install the elbows and the sight gauge that go on the inside of the, the tank that's going to be in between the tank and the side of the tractor. So first we'll need to put some um, thread tape on each one of these elbows and start these, get them tightened down. And this one we'll want to orient so that it's parallel with the edge of the tank because it's going to follow the, the side up there. Likewise with the other elbow on the other end, we'll throw pipe tape on it. And thread it into the, the hole on the rear. For both of these elbows, we want to direct them, kind of aim them at this fitting here in the side of the tank. It's, it's just a quarter inch 20 uh, nut that's molded into the side of the tank. We're going to P-clip the sight gauge hose to that, that spot, so both of these elbows should point to, to that spot. For the sight gauge hose, we're going we're gonna to take the seven and a half foot length, stretch it from both these elbows, and put a P-clip in here um, using these worm gear hose clamps. We're going to fasten it to each one of the, the elbows. Uh, prior to fastening that down or attaching them, we do have two red sight gauge balls. That we're going to, one of them will go in, in this side, um, in this side tube here, and the other one will go in the rear sight gauge tube. You can spray a little bit of WD-40 on the ends, help it go on the, over the barb a little bit easier. Okay, then we have a P-clip that goes here to hold the angle in the sight gauge. Goes around the hose, put your a little quarter 20, um, I think it's three quarter inch bolt with a lock washer, flat washer, through the P-clip, 
and into the fitting that's on the molded into the tank. And then tighten that down. Okay, so the next step we're gonna put another sight gauge in the back corner here. I'm gonna go from the, the top port on the back corner of the tank down to uh, the, the bottom bottom corner. So first we'll we'll put our uh, elbows in. They have the, the pipe tape already. We'll just screw those in until they're down tight. And this one will be pointed down to the, the bottom port. Once the elbows are in, we'll we'll put the hose on. If you need to use a little bit of lubricant to get the hose to go over the barb, it's, it's fine. Take your red ball sight indicator, put it in the, the hose, put your hose clamps over. Connect it to the top there like it, and tighten down your hose clamps. All right, now we'll do the, the uh, right side tank. Making sure you get the red sight gauge ball in there. Close. Quarter inch bolt, lock washer and flat washer. Pinch through the P-clip and into the fitting in the tank, mold it into the tank. Once your sight gauge is installed, you're ready to throw your tank onto the, onto the tractor. All right, we set the tank assembly down onto the, the rear support and the front bar support. And now we've installed the, the bolts from the backside through these flanges on the inside of the tank support, flat washer and lock nut on the inside. And we'll leave those loose for now until we get the other side tank on. And once, once we get the other side on, we'll come back and tighten all the bolts all together. Next, we'll come around to the front of the tank assembly that we just installed on the left side. We've got these 5 8 inch U-bolts that go around the, the front weight bracket and into the tabs on the back side here. Um, on the back side, we're going to use these, these tabbed washers uh, to go in between the two plates here and then a 5 8 inch lock nut. So we'll, we'll install these by hand, and again, we'll leave it loose until we're all done with, with all the assembly and come back and tighten everything.
Next, we're going to do the tank assembly for the right side of the tractor. We grabbed it with the fork truck again. Uh, the extensions under the under the forks, just flush with the inside of the tank. Uh, Barry's going to use the forklift here to lift the tank assembly into place. Now that we've got the right side tank assembly installed onto the machine uh, with these uh, half inch four and a quarter inch bolts, put those in. With the last of the half inch bolts installed on the rear, we're going to move to the front and install the U-bolts. We're going to use the 5 8 U-bolts to install the front of the mount brackets of the tanks. So we'll slide those in here, use the clip washers again on the back side, and hand tighten the nuts onto the U-bolt. Since we do some subassembly at the factory on these tank assemblies, uh, some of the bolts may be tight in a position that doesn't quite align, allow alignment with the, the holes as you're installing. One thing to think about as you're installing the tank assembly is that you can loosen the, the bolts that hold the, the pans, the support tubes together, and allow a little bit more flexibility or um, movement in these, these support tubes so that you can get these holes to line up. Um, not taking the bolts all the way out, just loosening up the, the nut on the bolt so that it's more of a loose assembly and the tubes can, can be adjusted by hand. So now that we have both tank assemblies installed with hand tight fasteners, we're going to go through and tighten everything down with an impact gun, varying sizes throughout the machine that we'll point on as we go. We're going to take a 30 millimeter socket and tighten down the the bolts that hold the mount plate onto the tractor. <clears throat> There's no special pattern. All right, next thing we'll tighten are the back bolts on the rear support. Uh, these are half inch bolts, so they get a three quarter inch socket. Okay, for these in middle two bolts, it's going to be helpful to have a swivel extension or, or a deep well socket. But uh, put the wrench on the back side and the swivel on the inside. Next, we'll use a 15 16 inch deep well socket to tighten down all the U bolts on the front end. Next, we're going to take our inch and an eighth open end box end wrench and an inch and eighth socket and tighten up the three bolts on the front weight bracket. Inch and a quarter fitting goes into the, the bulkhead that comes with your tank. You're just going to screw it on down, tighten it up, and have the port face to the back. Okay. Then we'll route the hose off the barb here on down the back of the rear support tube. And we'll Slide it down the back of the of the uh, support tube here. Okay. A couple places we can zip tie it. Send along these uh, eighteen inch uh, zip ties, so we can. Secure the vent hose a couple places along the, the rear support here. And then the hose just routes out to the ground here. And then you can trim the hose as you see fit. So what we're going to move to next are the, the lines group standard. 
So it's the plumbing that comes standard with your tank system. Um, what you'll, you'll find in your kit are two hose assemblies that come with a ball valve, a bracket, the hose assembly itself, and a fitting that will actually need to be disassembled. Uh, this hose clamp needs to come off, loosen up, and we'll, we'll pull this flange off there. We'll take this flange and we'll install it on the right-hand side as well as the left-hand side of the tanks. So we'll go ahead and do that now. This is the right-hand side I have, I'm working on now. There is a difference. Um, let me talk about that real quick. The difference between right and left is basically the hose orientation. You can see how the right side skews off into the to the right, my right, uh, and the left left hand side skews off and goes to the left. That's just to match up with where the valve mounts versus the port on the tank. So we'll take this flange fitting off of here. Uh, it does come with a, a, an O-ring seal, um, so be sure to, to hold on to that. And then the the, the flange uh, hose clamp as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take, we'll put some pipe dope on the, on the threads and then we'll thread it in and, and tighten it down now. So the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and install the hose assembly with the bracket uh, onto, the, onto the weight bar here. And then we'll we'll fit the hose on after that. and we'll snug those down with the three quarter inch impact. All right, now that the bracket's installed on the weight bar with the, the two uh, 5 eighths inch bolts, we're gonna finish the assembly, uh, connecting the hose to the tank. Uh, taking your, make sure you have your O-ring seal here that into the flange, put your clamp on, line up your, your hose elbow, hold your flange there and tighten it down. All right, now we'll go ahead and do the other side, uh, the left hand side. Next, we'll take the rest of the assembly, install it to the frame, and then connect the hose at the, at the flange fitting. Next, we're gonna connect the hose to the tank onto the flange. Um, be sure you put your seal in there, seat it into the flange. Get the uh, hose lined up, put your clamp over, tighten it down. Okay, so this wraps up the basic installation of the 360 tanks on 8310R John Deere. Uh, it's got the rigid axle, it's got the power shift transmission. Um, there are a few slight differences in the ILS um, axle and the IVT transmission, but they're very minor as far as assemblies concerned. Um, what this does, it provides you a, a complete closed system uh, that you can shut off and plumb like you want. Um, we do offer an optional lines group that you can plumb uh, these tanks together into the back of the tractor, which we can go into next. But uh, for, for, for this installation, it, it's considered complete.
Okay, so now we're gonna do the install for an optional lines group. Uh, what the optional lines group does is it ties both tanks together to a, a central point that you can then route to the back of your tractor or fill from the front of your tractor. First step in that is taking a three inch ball valve and assembling it to a bracket that'll then be put on, to, installed onto the, uh, the tractor frame. So I'm gonna take a few bolts out of here, replace, replace the nuts with a, a stainless steel nut and a lock nut and um, then we'll go ahead and install it on the tractor. Now just for reference, the, the plate goes on the back side of the valve. So your bolts will go through the plate first and into the valve body. So your bracket should be assembled to the, the valve just like this. Next thing we'll do is assemble uh, a two inch valve to this, this bracket. It's another piece that goes in with the optional group and we'll uh, have a little bit of disassembly with that as well. Here again, we're gonna be replacing the lock washer and nut with a stainless nut, stainless nylock nut. So we'll get all this hardware out of the way. The way this works is the, the steel plate will go on top of the, the valve body. The bolt will go through the steel plate again. back here. So the first one we'll install here on the, the optional uh, lines group valve, the three inch valve, is this bracket. It's, we've got two bolt holes. What we'll have to do is remove this bolt and this bolt from the left hand outrigger and then put the plate in there and, and fasten it back together. It is a uh, 15 16 uh, wrench and, and socket to, to loosen those up. valve assembly we'll do. We're going to take this middle 13-inch uh, bolt out and put the bracket um, right on top of the, the weight bar here. So I'll take this out. This is inch and an eighth hardware. Um, they're socket and, and wrench. Take that loose here quick. Now that we have the two valve assemblies installed, we're going to plumb up the rest of the components that go with it. So there are a couple T's, some hosing, um, these, uh, these, these flange uh, hose clamps connect everything together. Um, so it's just be, be a matter of plumbing it up so that the tank, the, the right tank comes to the T, the T runs back to the three inch and the three inch goes to the, the, the left tank. So, and then there's a long hose that goes underneath the entire tractor. So, I'm going to set to work uh, putting everything together. And 
the uh, back of the three inch valve, there's a, a three inch to two inch flange reducer. Um, that'll go into a T like you see here. And that goes right on the back of your, your three inch uh, valve. So I'll put this together really quick. Important to keep track of your seals, making sure that there's a seal in between every every flange connection that you're making with these with these clamps. Okay, so um, as we're tying the the plumbing together on the back side, we're going to go from the two inch valve on the the, the standard lines group to the three inch valve using this 14 inch hose assembly. It's got an elbow on one end. It's open on the other end, so we're gonna have to put that onto the, the T barb on the back of the three inch valve. Um, we can use some lubricants, uh, use a band clamp, and uh, make it, then fit it up to the back of the, the two inch valve uh, using a seal and your, your flange clamp. Come back and tighten up your other end on the T. Continuing to plumb the three inch valve here. Go to the back side of the T. Put that on there. And it'll, it'll come to the front side of this T. Uh, it really helps to use a little bit of uh, WD-40. Okay, we're going to start plumbing the right hand tank with the, the lines group optional. Um, what we're going to do is put the elbow on the back of the two inch valve here and then route the hose from the back from that barb up to the front T barb here. All right, we're putting the 90 degree elbow on there with the seal in between this clamp. Just pointed straight to the left here will be ideal. Tighten that down. Get a little lubricant here to put the hose over the barb. All right, the last piece of the optional lines group is to take the hose uh, from the back of the tractor all the way to the front here in this valve. Uh, this is what turns on uh, your fill from the rear. So what we'll do is uh, it's, it's your 40, piece of 40 foot hose. We'll put a flange fitting, barb fitting in uh, with a clamp, tighten it down and attach it to the two inch ball valve here. use the uh, square o-ring and the flange uh, hose clamp making sure these are lined up really well